He's worthy to be praised this morning. Praise the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your voice. Come on. Breakthrough is coming. Breakthrough is coming. he was so ashamed. Now, he's a good man. He was a good man. He was a policeman. He was a Marine. He was a sheriff's deputy. He did good. But he was so ashamed of his lifestyle, of his lack of God, that he didn't come around. Now, is that because we made him feel that way? It is not. I will honestly, I can honestly say we did never, we never made him feel that way. Always loved. But it was his own guilt. And so when Joseph sang that song, it just reminded me, that's the first when he finally gave his heart to the Lord and said, I've tried everything. I've tried people, sex. I've tried money, I've tried travel, I've tried uniform, I've tried bodybuilding, and nothing is helping my heart. He rededicated his life to the Lord, and that was the first song he sent us on text. Mom and Dad, you got to listen to this song. This is about me. And... Praise God every time I hear it. So I was on my knees and I said, Lord, I just want to thank you for all these people's salvation, 
for eternal life, but also abundant life here on earth. And the Bible says, if we don't praise him, the rocks, he'll get the rocks to cry out. Rock music. Do you want rocks to be praising the Lord more than you? I mean, really, he can do that. He will do that. His, who, nobody can go to those mountains and say, there is no God that could make all these things. That's ridiculous, and they'd be lying out of their teeth. So, if you don't want the rocks to cry out and praise the Lord, then we need to be doing that. That's our place. So I just want to encourage you today to live in the abundance of the Lord, but to live praising the Lord. Find something every day, every service. God is so good. God is so good. Amen. Come on. God is, yeah, come on. Give God a good hand clap, a good hand clap of praise. Amen. You know, we here at the Life Church, we offer you all types of areas to serve. Thought I had a fly on my back. Sorry. <laughs> Amen. As I was thinking this morning about our giving. It's a service to the Lord. Yeah. We get to serve you by what you give as you serve the Lord. Has anybody in this place not been served by us? I didn't think so. But we want to go beyond these walls, and we have been because of your generous contributions. We love that. And if the ushers will come and partake, uh, collect the offering. Mine is right there. Holy Spirit, we just thank you so much for your generosity to us. And Lord, we take this small token of our love and appreciation and give it back to you. And God, we just speak an abundant blessing upon your offering, your offering, Lord, this day. Amen. Amen. In uh, 1 Peter 4.10, it says, it says, each of you should, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace and in, in its various forms. If any of you speaks, he should do so who speaks with the word of God. If any of you serve, he should do so with the strength of God provides so that in all things, God be praised through Jesus Christ. To him, glory and power forever and ever. Amen? Amen. That is our testimony to the world that we're reaching souls. And we thank you from the bottom of our hearts as pastors and uh, you out in uh, Facebook land as you generously give. We worship you. We worship God for you. And we serve God for you and serve you through Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Pastor. Whoa. Good word, man. I, uh, I sense God's presence today in such a, just a sweet way. Uh, I feel safe in God's presence. I am safe. I, uh, I find joy in, in knowing him. I, I find connection when we get to come together. You know, all of the, the things that I, I used to wish I had, I found uh, in him. And, you know, I really, I hope and pray, you know, that the Lord just meets you at your place of need today and that you would be open to that. Uh, hey, we've had a, a couple people ask, hey, where's, past, where's Stefan and, and Tammy? And so, hey, Pastor Eva, why don't you come on up, man, give us a quick update, what's going on with Stefan and Tammy? So, and then you could lead us in prayer for them, okay? Oh, yeah. 
So Stefan and Tammy are, they have an infection in their stomach right now. Worship, worship leaders, yes, our worship leaders, and they haven't been feeling well, and they recently were able to go to the doctor, and that's the, the information they got from the doctors. So they're taking care of themselves, taking antibiotics. Um, so I just want to let our church know because, you know, I did have a couple of people come up, and, you know, and Tammy, Stefan, if you're watching us, we love you. We miss you. <laughs> and, um, you know, worship, you know, I mean, I mean, when you see Tammy and Stefan and then you don't see them, of course, we're like, man, where's Tammy and Stefan? You know, we, so, um, so let's keep them in prayer. So um, one thing that was happening is because they didn't know about this infection that they were giving it to each other back and forth and, and not knowing what it was. So, Father, I just, I want to lift up Tammy and Stefan, Father God. Lord, uh, Lord, Stefan's text was, I want to be there next week. Amen. So, Father God, I know that they miss being in fellowship. I know that they miss each brother and sister here. And, Father God, so I just pray, Lord, that you would bring wellness and healing, Father God, to that, um, that you would remove that infection in their tummy. Father God, and that the antibiotics that they're taking, that it would do exactly that. Father, and, and Lord, I thank you for doctors, Lord, that, um, Lord, that can give the right medicine for that right infection. And, and Lord, thank you for their, um, for their years of schooling, Father God, to, um, to help people just like Stefan and Tammy, Father God. So, so, Lord, I thank you for doctors, and, Lord, I thank you that, um, Father, looking forward to seeing Tammy and Stefan next week. Amen. Father, if it's your will, in Jesus' name, amen. Pastor, yeah. see, you, it, dude, you got the hot hand right now. I want you to go ahead and pray for Grandpa Bob, who's having a pacemaker put in tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so... usher who always greets you coming in and greets you going out first one in the church last one out yeah. it's a beautiful brother y'all see me i'll be out there doing usher stuff you go in and get what you want thank you. father thank you for grandpa bob Amen. lord thank you for who he is and thank you for the man that he is and lord thank you that this procedure is going to go well Lord, thank you that they're going to go in there and everything's going to go well. Yeah, Lord, I thank you for the doctors that you have already assigned yeah. to do that. Lord, thank you for that pacer that you have set aside just for Grandpa Bob. Lord, I thank you for the peace that Grandpa Bob is receiving as I speak. Father, thank you for Grandpa Bob. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. And how many of y'all believe God hears those prayers? Amen. Right? And how many of you believe that God answers prayer? I want you to know that there are some things in life that come up and sometimes they seem like a surprise to you. Any of y'all ever have something just come up, yeah. something unexpected, right? I want you to know this morning that when it comes to God and his infinite knowledge and the way that he deals with us, nothing surprises God. God knows everything. God, he is all-knowing. Word for that is omniscient, which means he knows everything. Come on, say everything. everything. No, there is a God never says, man, I didn't know that was coming. Right? Never. God will never say, 
No way. I didn't know that. God knew who was going to be here this morning. Every single one of you, God foreknew that you were going to be here today. He knew the songs we were going to sing. He knew the memory that was going to be come up in your heart. He knew the emotion that you would feel. The questions that you might be asking. God knows everything. We don't. We don't know everything. Sometimes we wish we did. Some of you are sitting here this morning with questions about your life, about your situations, your circumstances, what to do, decision you have to make. Some big, some small, and God cares about them all. All of them. And I hope that today he might answer some of your questions today. I want you to know that God is a God of direction. If you have some decision that you're having to make, if you need some direction in your life, if you've been asking God some questions, I believe that the Spirit of God has some answers for you today. I sense that there's someone here who you find yourself at a, at a difficult place today. There's someone in here asking, man, God, why me? Why this? Why now? Have any of y'all ever been at one of those difficult, hard places in your life? Can I see your hand today? And I won't ask for the hand of that person that's there right now. But I believe I have a word for you today. The Bible says, I'll take the hand of those who don't know the way. Who can't see where they're going. I'll be a personal guide to them. Directing them through unknown country. I'll be there to show them what roads to take. Make sure they don't fall into the ditch. The Spirit of the Lord is saying today, these are the things I'll be doing for them. Say, that's us. us. Sticking with them, not leaving them for a minute. Father, in the name of Jesus, sit da la la vakanda. Whoo! Let that word fall on the fertile part of our hearts. Let that good seed, Lord, fall in a place that it could grow, Lord, a hundred times. Faith and hope and purpose today. Bring clear definition to our lives today. Bring guidance and direction. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen, amen, or if you want to speak a little Spanish, amen. So how do I find God's will? How do I get unstuck? Any of y'all ever been stuck? I think there's a couple of y'all stuck right now. I believe it. I say, well, Pastor Henry, why do you say that? Because the word that the Lord has given me is for some of you who are stuck. That's it. God, don't, is he going to give a word? He don't want it to return void. It gives me a word. He gives it with a purpose. How do I get unstuck? 
What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to do it? Well, God wants to give you direction today. God promises to guide you today. So we're going to look at a lot of scripture this morning. We're going to start with that one that I shared with you. Man, God gave me that word some, hmm, I want to say how many years ago? About, 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 about 2004. That's 18 years ago, right? Look, I remember because that's when I got this Bible. They look a little wore out. <laughs> Yikes, you know? But he gave me that, he gave me that word in a real difficult time in my life. I felt in some ways that my life was over. My ministry was over. My sense of purpose was over. I was done. Like the enemy had said, ya tuvo over my life. When it was a lie. It was a lie. Because the devil is a liar. He's the father of all lies. That's his tool. That's his go-to every time. But there is no power in that lie unless you believe it. And some of you are believing the lie of the enemy who's told you it's over. Who's told you you don't know what you're doing. Who's told you it isn't worth it. Why even try? Why even believe? Why even go to church? Why even give? Why even live? It's a lie. Why even continue? Why even sacrifice? It's a lie. The word that I spoke to you this morning that I believe is from God, from the throne room, was spoken to a people that had not heard word in a long time. Ever been there where you're just not able to, you're just not hearing God's voice? You just can't tune in and you're trying, maybe you're reading the scriptures, sometimes going through the motions, sometimes we reach the place, and this happens to some of us who've been around for a bit where we're not even reading God's word. You know, and if we are, we don't have that intimate relationship with the word. Maybe something has happened. Maybe we're going a little cold. But for whatever reason, the people that God spoke this word, they had not received. It says that the Lord had been silent. How many of y'all have ever been at the place where you feel like God has been silent? You can't hear him. Well, I want to encourage you this morning. He's not silent today. God is speaking. He loves you. He has a direction and a plan for your life. So people had not heard from God in a while. And they were in need of guidance in the same way that some of us may be in need of guidance today. God spoke this word again to me about three, a little over three, about three, three or four months ago. And he spoke it. He brought it to me, two different people, not knowing my life circumstance, things that I was thinking about going through. I needed to hear some words from God brought me this word back. That's how God is. If you don't get it the first time, he'll bring it back again. <laughs> and Case Henry and it's like, in Case Henry, you don't get it, I'm going to bring somebody. They're going to give it to you. And, and then once he gave it to me, he said, oh, obviously you weren't listening. I'm going to bring somebody else. Uh, and if you're still not listening, I'm going to keep that into your heart. And then when the time is right, it's going to burst forth from your spirit and it's going to bless somebody else. That's where we're at today. That's how God is. He brings us through things 
so that we can bring others So I get to share with you about God's guidance today. Let me read it to you again. If you have your Bibles, Isaiah 42, verse 16. I know I didn't quote it a little bit earlier. I didn't give you the address. That's where we're at, Bill. Chap, Isaiah 42, 16. The Bible says, I will lead the blind by a way they do not know. And paths they do not know, I will guide them. I will make darkness into light before them and rugged places into plains. These are the things I will do. And I will not leave them undone. So I spoke at an unction a little bit earlier. I, as the Holy Spirit just put it in my spirit again. I, I started before I started. <laughs> All right, so let me break it down a little bit to you, what the Spirit of the Lord said to them and is saying to us today and is saying to you. First little part there, it says, I will lead the blind by the way they do not know. In paths they do not know, I will guide them. Now, what are the kind of things that blind us? Pain. When we're in pain, we can't see sometimes. I mean, there's something ever fall on your foot. Ah! You don't see nobody. Inner pain. Tears. Hey, listen, I've had the Spirit of God fall on me when I'm driving. I say, Lord, not now. I can't see. Tearful pain, painful tears coming down, tears, pain, sorrow, disappointment. These are things that can blind us, that can deafen our ears. The Spirit of the Lord says, when you're like that, and you may be like that right now, when you're blind, I'll lead you. The question is never, does God want to lead us? He always does. We're a people of destiny, a people of direction. The question is always, do we want to be led? That's always the question is, do I want to be led today? And if yes, who do I want to be led by? What do I want to be led by? When do I want to be led by? It says, I will lead you. Even when I cannot see clearly, God sees perfectly. Is there better than 2020 vision? Or is it 2020? Is that the best vision? There's better, Pastor Joseph? That's better than, oh, that's the best 2020 vision? All right. So let's just call it, uh, with the Lord, he's got 2020 plus. You may not be able to see clearly, but God always does. He always sees clearly. He's got great vision. Even when I cannot see clearly, God sees perfectly. Perfectly. Then he says, watch, I will make darkness into light. Wow. Have any of y'all ever been in a dark place? I mean literally. Ben, I, I have. I bumped into stuff. The garage, our garage light doesn't come on tonight. But I hit something. Sometimes there's a box misplaced. Boom. I bump over it. I ain't going to lie. You know, I, I get up so super early, you know, I, when it's dark. I get up when it's dark. I'm up 3, 3.30 in the morning. And, you know, sometimes I was sharing with somebody, I think there's a grizzly bear in my room when I wake up. <laughs> That's right, I do. I say, whoa, whoa what is that? And it's... Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> but I'd be, I'll bump over something. Or I bump over the dogs all, all the time. Oh. <laughs> Baby, I was talking about the dogs. Woo, como grita. <laughs> but I'd be bumping over some things when it's when it's dark. I do, man. I've hit my toes sometimes. The other day, they bang. I said, ah! It was I hit my knee on a, a pastor. Had put a bench behind the bed, and I got out. I said, oh, ah! Yee! Thank you, Jesus. No. Sometimes, sometimes dark things come into our lives. I had a kid a little bit, but sometimes painful things, dark things, personal failures, disappointed in the people around them. Sadness. Dark things. Things that the enemy will bring into your life to destroy you. Destroy your faith in him. Destroy your faith in one another. And things that can bring condemnation upon yourself. <coughs> but God promises to take those things. And to reshape them. Take those dark things. My evangelist. The stories you share about being in the park and being in the oval and the wickedness that was there and the wickedness that you allowed into your life and it was dark and it was ugly. Whoop, 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 whoop. Wow. <laughs> that was a dark story. Come on, let me hear you say not today. Not today. Not today. Put a little glory powder on it. Right? And then I could go, I can, man, oh, through the back, through the, hmm. He takes the things that are dark and somehow, man, he reshapes them. And that's what he's talking about here. I'll make darkness into light before them and rugged places into plains. What that means is, how many of y'all know what a difficult place looks like in your life? Obstacles. You know what I'm talking about? Obstacles. Things that look, man, they're obstacles. How can I ever get over that? Well, the word of the Lord is, no, I can take those obstacles, those rugged places. Say rugged places. Rugged places. Right? And I'll bulldoze them for you. I'll take that rough road, that rough situation, that rough relationship, that bump in the road, and I will bulldoze it. I'll take that rough place and I'll make it plain. I'll make it smooth. I'll make it nice for you. That's the word of the Lord today. All will make darkness into light. He'll take the darkest times and use them, turn them around. He said, I'll take the rugged place and make it plain. He'll bulldoze it. And then he says, I love this. Look, let's, let's read this last part right here. What does the last part say? I will what? I will not leave them undone. In other words, I can handle this thing. Not only can I handle it, but I will handle it for you. 
Not only he, he's the God that can, but he's the God that will. And the question is, can we trust him? Will you trust him? Because right now, he wants to make a way for you. And we used to sing a song that said, God can make a way where there seems to be no way. He works through ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide, right? Bring me closer to his side. Anyway, don't get me going. I'm feeling, oh, Satan, Allah, Santa. God is making a way for you. He's making a way. And you can trust him today. He says, I will not leave them undone. Psalm 32, excuse me. Oh, my, one, two. So, uh, Psalm 32 and 8 says, look, watch. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you and I will watch over you. He says he's going to guide you. He's going to direct you. He's going to he's going to instruct you. He will do it. The Bible says he will teach you the way that you should go. How many of you here have right now you need to know where to go? You're asking God something and the spirit of the Lord is saying by his word, I will teach you. I will lead you. I will guide you. I will counsel you. I will watch over you. And someone would say, well, man, why isn't he showing me right now? Why don't he just kind of give me a revelation and show me everything that he's going to do in my life? I want to see it all. I don't want it a little bit at a time. I want it all. I want to know, baby. I want to know what God is going to do in and through our lives. I want to know. I want to see it all. <laughs> you know, I believe this, man. I think some of us, I don't mean me, there's no mouse in my pocket. I learned in my business where I do the counseling, we use I statements, all right? I don't include everybody. I said one time, I said, well, we, somebody said, what, you got a mouse in your pocket? No, it's not on me, it's you. Me. I mean, I believe there are times, man, if God showed me everything, I wouldn't mess it up. I wouldn't mess it up. And God shows his examples in the Bible, Abraham and Sarah. God told Abraham, he called him out, and we may be looking at that in a little bit. God called him out and said, hey, listen, man, I'm going to bless. I'm going to bless everybody, millions and millions of people through you. Your seed, through your seed, through the, what comes out of you, child that you birth, I'm going to bless the entire planet. Well, Abraham estaba viejito. He was like 75 years old. You know, Sarah, his wife, were old. I mean, straight up. How is this going to happen? And so in his head, he thought, well, this ain't working right now. We got to come up with an alternative plan to see this thing happen and happen right now. So <laughs> Abraham's wife says, this, says to Abraham, hey, listen, man. I'm a little bit old for this. I don't know that we're going to be able to make this happen. Why don't I just give you my servant girl and you can make a baby with her? No, back then they had multiple wives. You know what Abraham said? All right, I can do that. Yeah, I'm going to figure this thing out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to work out a way so this could happen. But it wasn't God's way. And let me share with you, maybe you've gotten out of God's will and you've tried to do something your way. There's no mistake so big that God can't fix it. Mm. 
And God did fix it. He says, God said, no, that's not what I told you. That's not how we're going to do things. No, I'm going to give you a baby through your wife. And I thank God he did. I thank God he made that adjustment because today we're the children of God. He is Father Abraham, the father of faith. Well, sometimes he don't. I've known people, yeah, he's showing them all at once, but no, God is a God of process. He don't give it to you all at once. Remember Jonah? Pastor, you preached on Jonah a couple of months ago, right? God told him, hey, look, this is what I'm going to do. We're going to save Nineveh. There's are going to be revival in the land. All these wonderful things are going to happen. And what did Jonah do? No, God showed him. He could, Jonah got scared, and Jonah said, whoop, I'm running. Some of y'all are still running. He ran and God sent a big fish and the fish ate him. Like they swallowed him. And then he became whale barf vomit on the beach. Hey, I think God was merciful. There are two ways you could come out of a whale. <laughs> There's a third reason, you know, sometimes is you could try to get ahead, other times you could run from it. But the third reason is that if God showed you everything at one time, you wouldn't need faith. You wouldn't need faith. You wouldn't need to trust. You know, it just, boom, it's everything all at once. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 6 that without faith, it's impossible to please God. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says we live by faith and not by sight. Proverbs 4 and 18 says the path of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, shining ever brighter till the full day of light. All right, now watch this. I've watched a lot of dawn's break. I love that. It's like dark, all right? Morning can be so real dark, and all of a sudden, just a little bit of light. You can't see the light. It's behind the over here. It's behind those. What mountain range is that over here? Let me see. Where my right there? Yeah, the Sierra Mountains, right? Oh, well, that way. <laughs> Which way? <laughs> hey, come on, man. I'm from New York. L.A., it's that way. All right, thank, thank you, Loretta. It's that way, right? And so I'd be walking, and I'm up early. I'm out, and, I'm, and all of a sudden, it's dark. And then all of a sudden, I just see a little, like, light. It's not even, it just looks, I see, well, there, you can't see the sun. You can't even see the glow at first. It just looks, the color of the sky changes. The dawn is breaking. You know, and as it starts to come up, it's still dark, you know. You can still hear the bear growling. <laughs> you know, but you can begin to see some of the obstacles in the way. But it breaks, it, un it unfolds. And that's how the will of God is. It, it, it unfolds. I'd be lying to you if I told you, man, I wish it would unfold faster. I sometimes, Lord, I want to see it faster. A little too slow. <laughs> a little too slow. We're slow on our clock, but not on God, because God is always on time. Come on, turn to the person next to you and remind them, say, God is always on time. The will of God dawns on you one step at a time. It unfolds like a faint glow on the horizon. And a great example of is we find in the life of Abraham. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says, 
God speaking to Abraham. And first, let me let you know that Abraham, when God called him, wasn't a goody goody, he didn't grow up in a Christian home, wasn't a Jew, wasn't, no. His ancestors, the people he came from, were idol worshipers. You know, he didn't know the true, the living God yet. And yet God called him, God spoke into his life and spoke into his existence and said, leave your country, your family, your relatives, and go to the land that I will show you, I will bless you and make your descendants into a great nation. God said to Abraham, step out of the comfortable and step into the unknown. And y'all, I, I, I might have shared at one time that this is the scripture that God used to call me into the valley from L.A. Leave, you know, and go over there, over the grapevine, and go to Visalia. What's that? <laughs> Do they got a Tony Romas there, you know? Do they got... You know, what's the mall like? You know, do they got, you know what I'm saying? Or what's it? Uh, and man, where is it? How far is it from the beach? <laughs> Can I buy the clothes that I like there? Eat the food that I like? What are the people like? You know, what are the, uh, oh, you, no, it was unknown. Some of you, you've grown up here, you know this, but me, I'm a city boy. That's all I know. You know, growing up, when they say, hey, man, where do you, you know, where do you, where do you get milk? Where does milk come from? The bodega? <laughs> For real. Corn and all this stuff, man. Oh. I remember being out front, man, thinking, putting up that beautiful thing up that the thing up in front welcoming you says remember baby we put up the banner up front man I was so excited to put that banner up everybody's gonna see the banner man everybody's gonna want to come they're gonna stop we're gonna give them a bottle of water like we used to do on Long Beach Boulevard right and man it's gonna be amazing David McCarty First day it was up, I was so excited. I couldn't wait to get that thing. I put it up there. He was looking at it. <laughs> Pretty nice, Pastor. <laughs> I said, yeah, right? I said, I love it, man. It was just beautiful. He said, well, we might have a tractor or two come by here every <laughs> now and then. <laughs> what? Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> you know, God didn't show Abraham where he was going to. He didn't show me either. He showed Pastor Eva, I don't know, he gave her something, man. She was scaring me. We moving. We sell. Hey, yeah. You're right? We moving. We got I said, hey, come on, man. You were you even in the Kool-Aid. <laughs> make, but it's real. This wasn't easy for me to come here. I love that I'm here now, but uh, I needed some direction. I needed some word, and this is the word that God gave me. Step out of the comfortable. Step into the unknown. He didn't show Abraham where he was taking him. Remember that verse in Isaiah? I read to paths they do not know. I will guide them. And I want you to get this. I've shared this concept here at this church before, but you want to write this down. And that's this. You want direction? You can't steer a parked car. 
Let me say it again. You can't steer a parked car. In other words, the only way you can steer a car is what? When it's moving. When it's moving. So you want some direction from God, it, 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 you got to take it out of park. Please don't put it in reverse. <laughs> At least put it in neutral. And let, take a step, right? And then God can guide you. But we got to move. Motion follows motion. We find another example in Psalm 77 and 19, right? These are the story, a testimony about the children of Israel who had been in bondage to the Egyptians, been praying, God, get me out of here. God, get me out of here. God, set us free from this. Set us free from the hand of Pharaoh. God, get me out of here. And they get out, and man, if something happens. There's like a, a big obstacle, the Red Sea. You know the story if you saw the Ten Commandments. They're out there. They're surrounded. Really, there's only one way to go. There is no escape, right? There's a big obstacle, the Red Sea, all right? The Red Sea. And what does God do? The Bible says, the psalmist said, your road led through the Red Sea, your pathway through the mighty waters, a pathway no one knew was there. I like this. NIV says, your footsteps were unseen. Now, what I want you to notice is that God's pathway led them through the sea, not around the sea, not under the sea, not over the sea, but where? Through the sea. Through the sea. Through it. Through a path. And then later on, you know, you read about that. Is they walk, they go on dry land through the sea. Come on, let me hear you say, Solo Dios can do that. Only God. Solo Dios can do that. Not around, not over, but through. God guided them through. And how does God guide us through? How does God give us direction? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm going to give you four today. The first way that God uses to guide us, to give us direction is he guides me by his spirit. Say with me, by his spirit. By his spirit. Now, I don't, how many, I don't know if everybody here is a believer. I don't know if everybody here has. How, how many of you have asked Jesus into your heart? All right, right? So let me ask you, listen, when you ask Jesus into your heart, that doesn't mean a little Jewish guy moves in there. Doesn't happen. <laughs> hey, that's how little, hey, uh, that's a little kid version. He said, well, how does that, that's what they think is a little Jewish guy goes, moves in there. No disrespect to you, Jesus, but that's not what happens. God moves into you when you ask him to come into your life. He comes as the spirit of God, the spirit of light. And that spirit, who is the Holy Spirit, right, moves in you. In Psalm 143, the psalmist writes, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. Holy Spirit leads us and guides us. And one of the ways he does that, is by opening our minds to understand what the Bible says. How many of y'all ever tried to read the Bible before you were a believer? Right? You, right? I, listen, I did. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't get it. I'm serious. And with me, it's, what's the big deal? You know, this part, I'm being honest. This, part of this, this thing is boring. Hey, give me the sports pages. I could read them cover to cover. The Daily News. Give me Sports Illustrated. Oh, I could read that thing. I could read it. 
Give me the Bible, and I tried, because I tried to read some different things. I tried to, and I said, man, what's the big deal with this? And I so many times I said, boy, I, I don't get it. Not that I didn't try to get it, but that I didn't, I, I didn't have the spirit of life in me. I didn't have the spirit of truth in me. Without the Holy Spirit, the things of God don't make sense to us. The Bible without the spirit. You, you don't get it. Listen to what Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 13 and 14. He says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. And he will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. God teaches us by his spirit through the word of God. God's will is found in God's word. All right? Straight up. I'm going to come back to that in a second. 1 Corinthians 2, 11 and 16 says it like this. No one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. We have the Spirit who is from God that we may understand what God has freely given us. The man without the Spirit, what? Does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. But we have the mind of Christ. I put in there, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have the mind of Christ. Listen, if I don't have word of God in me, I really don't have anything to say to you of substance that's going to help to change your life. I tell a good story. I stay away from jokes because I forget the punchline. But I do have this. I have enough word in me that I can share with most people when we're sitting down and talking. And, and that's what sets us free. That's what gives us life. That's what gives us direction. And we're going to come back to that in a minute. But that's why we need the Spirit of God inside of us. That's why we need Jesus. I asked at the beginning, all y'all, how many of you are looking for some kind of direction in your life and to find yourself in a hard place? First place I'm going to point you to is I'm going to point you to the one who's going to always lead you in the right direction. I, how many of y'all have ever given bad advice? I have. I ain't going to lie to you. That's why I'm taught in school. I don't, don't give advice. Don't give counsel. You know, as a counselor, don't, you know, you help people help people to figure it out on their own. There's usually the answers are inside of them. And same with us. If you have the word of God in you, that's where the answers are. And so that's the first step is man, get people to receive Jesus and then get them in God's word. Then God can give us some direction. The truth sets us free. The truth guides us. But I'm going to come to that in just a second. I might as well jump in it right now. Second way he guides us is by his word, by his word. The Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Opening the Bible is like turning on the light. That's it, you know. And a lamp back then was a lantern, all right, a little different than this. Because a lantern, you could only see so far ahead. That's what it was, you know. When you're carrying a lantern, it's like, got a few steps ahead of you. It gives you enough illumination to move ahead and not trip and not get eaten by the grizzly bear. Mm. Opening the Bible is like turning on the light in a dark room. That's why 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is inspired by God and useful to teach us what's true, to make us realize what's wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we're wrong and teaches us to do what is right. The third way he uses is he guides me by his people, by his spirit, by his word, by his people. Let me hear you say, I need people in my life. Now, this is counterculture. You know, the culture we live in is advice. You have to be an individual. You can do it by yourself. You don't need anybody's help. Well, we definitely need God's help, but God created us for community. 
God created us for connection. You know, it's really the growing people in our church are the people that have connections with somebody else. That's who's growing. You know, the things that we've been able to accomplish together, whether it was when we started a couple of, a little over a year ago, almost two years ago, we started the Me I Want to Be. We started to make some connections. And we moved on to the purpose driven life, even better connections. Some of you hardcore nutritionists like myself, the Daniel plan, oh yeah, we got really connected, we got to eat together. And some, I don't, we won't, can't talk too much about food, Mon, Daniel plan, it makes other people jealous. I want to make you real jealous about the Daniel plan. My goal and Pastor Eva's goal is to bring everybody through the Daniel plan, get everybody healthy, body, soul, and spirit. So you're going to be hearing a little bit more about that. There are how many ladies are in the transformation class, the women's Bible study during the day. Other group coming together for prayer group, prayer meeting, intercessory prayer on Tuesday night. We're making connections. Boy, yesterday we had a bunch of men in here. How many were about 30 Holy Ghost filled men? Whoa, they got a little bit crazy for Jesus yesterday. Oh my goodness, making connections. We're born for connection. We're born for connection. You know, the Celebrate enemy. Recovery. Celebrate recovery coming up, girl. Whoa. Woo. Coming up soon, right? June 30th. You know, and we've got a group of 12, 12 people coming, man, and leadership group coming together. We're being trained by our pastor and leader to celebrate recovery, making connections. I always say we may not have it all together, but together we have it all. In L.A. at our church, we used to say, together we bad. Yeah, that's how we used to say it. He guides us by his people. We need people. We're created for connection. People that know God, people that love God, and people that love you. Colossians 3 and 16 says, let the word of God, let, excuse me, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another. We need, we need to help each other. We need to admonish one another. Everybody should have someone in their lives that you can go to, that can teach you, that can admonish you, either an older brother, older sister in the faith, a mentor, a friend, a sponsor, an accountability partner, someone that you're connected with. Proverbs 27 and 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. We sharpen one another, all right? Hebrews 10 and 24 says, and let, and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good needs. So we spur one another on. Do you need teaching? Do you need sharpening? Do you need to be spurned on? Hey, get together, get into something. Whether it's that group pastor leads on Wednesday for the ladies, right? Transformation group. Whether if you want to sign up for the Daniel plan, we're going to make up a list to do that. Whether it's the men's group, whether it's in the intercessory prayer group, whether it's the Daniel plan, there's a lot of just celebrate recovery coming up at the end of, but get plugged in, get connected, all right? The Bible says, pity the man, the woman that falls and has no one there to pick them up. How many of y'all have ever been there? Come on, tell the truth and shame El Diablo today. You've been isolated, right? You've been back. You've fallen, man, and said, oh, man, I, now I'm in isolation. Now I'm all alone. And guess who gets, who wants to attack you? The Bible says the devil goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. No, man, he ain't up in the front of the pack. The devil's in the back waiting for the weak one. The one that's stepping a little bit behind. Hey, oh, yeah, pastor, I'm behind you, pastor. Way behind. <laughs> That's the one that gets attacked. He's isolated. He's limping. She's limping. No. Man, get up. Find somebody. Get connected. I've spent two years preaching and teaching on connection because I believe it. That's why we're growing stronger as a body. 
know that all the one another's in the Bible, we pray for one another, we love for one another. We, we, it's important. It's vital. It makes us stronger. We need his spirit. God uses it to guide us. We need his word. But we need to be around the right people. And that's the body of Christ. That's the body of Christ. And fourthly and finally, he guides me through circumstances. God closes some doors. He opens others. And I want to say is there's nothing wrong with asking God, you know, for, I want to put this out there, asking God. Sometimes we're confused. We don't know what to do. You know what I do sometimes? I put a fleece before the Lord. How many of y'all know what a fleece is? Right? A fleece is where, man, you put, hey, Lord, I need some direction. I'm going to put this out there. I, I need a little bit of help. I need a lot of bit of help. And I want to be sure that this is the right thing. And I, so I'll put a fleece out there. It's in Gideon's chapter 6. You read about Gideon's fleece. Right? Gideon said, hey, okay, Lord, if you really want me to do this, I'm going to... I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is, man, I'm going to put this out here, my fleece, little blanket out here, and, 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 and uh, everything around the blanket is going to be dry, is it, it's gonna be dry and, but the blanket is going to be wet. I said, oh, yeah, okay, good, good. Oh, well, wait a minute, I still have a little bit of doubt right here, so how about we flip that, Lord? I'm going to put the blanket out there, and then... Everything around the, uh, bl around the blanket is going to be wet, but the blanket is going to be dry. That's a fleece. I'm not sure if I got that order right. Did I get it right, Pastor? Do you remember? Was it one or the other, right? It was the opposite. It was the other way around, but that was basically it. God did it. God showed it. God did it. He said, wait, wait a minute. Let me try it again. But it wasn't that he doubted God. It was that he doubted himself. He doubted himself. I just want to make the right decision. Haven't y'all ever been there? I want to make the right decision, Lord. I don't want to miss you. I don't want to get this thing right, Lord. So I'm going to put this before you. I'm going to put this fleece before you. You know, with us, man, we kind of jumped up. And I, I tell you, when God called us out here, man, we heard on Sunday and we put the house up. We put the house for sale on Monday. Just like that. And then I put a price on the house. Well, the first month, month and a half, the house didn't sell. Of course, we wanted to move out here as quickly as possible. Pastor, the pastor just jumped out of here. She just started passing the church by herself. She left me in L.A. <laughs> yeah, you going to wait? You got to do that? I, I'm going over there right now. She moved into Pastor Frank's house, lived with Frank and Yolanda. I was still back there. I was still in school trying to get some things together. Man, I was thinking, well, maybe we missed that. Maybe we jumped too fast. You know, no, no, no thing on the house, man, how are we going to move over there? I got this house to sell. Wasn't the best market for the house. I thought, well, Lord, if you really want this thing to happen for us and want me to move right now, I'm going to put, I'm going to change the price on the house. I uh, pray, Lord, what house, what, what do you want me to sell the house for? And there was a number that I knew is the number. Every time I see that number, I bless God. Every time. Whether it's at the time, whether it's on the side of the house, whether it's, it's our, always. And it's the number 633. Matthew 6.33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Forget about it. I put that number on the house. The house, boom, with the offers started coming in, man. Within two, three weeks, the house was sold and gone. I thought, man, I guess you do want me to move. <laughs> And I want you to know that I don't, I don't, I don't regret it one bit. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. The fleece was because Gideon 
was, was, no, it wasn't because he was doubting God, but because Gideon was doubting himself. Gideon wanted to be sure that his decision would honor God. So, I shared with you that God gave me this word that I shared with you 20 years ago, no, 2004, 18 years ago. And he gave it to me at a, such a really hard time in my life. It was a real time of victory, but I, yeah, I was, it was a difficult thing. In 2004, I resigned my church, church that Pastor was a part of. Others, in my, some of my friends, Pastor Frank was a part of, Pastor Jack. Uh, I had to step down as a pastor after being there 18, 19 years. I, I, uh, I had to go through a, uh, a restoration from my denomination, Assemblies of God, I had to sit down. And they sent me into this restoration program that would last two years. But of course, I didn't, I, I looked at it and I said, man, how am I going to do this? It's going to be hard. Not everything that God calls you to do is easy. You know, but I told you at that time, I thought this, this life that I'm living right now with you guys, this pastoral life, I thought it was over. But I went ahead and I did it. I thought I was going to come back and get a church. And it didn't work like that. They, people changed their mind. I went ahead and I did. You, you could trust God. You can't always trust people. I just want to tell you that. You know, I mean, hey, people will do you dirt. You know, uh, you can't put your trust in man. You put your trust in God. You put your trust in God's word. So I went ahead and I did that program. I did what I was asked to do. I thought everything was going to come back. All the beautiful promises, you know, that I was going to find way through the dark. He was going to leave me out of there. He was going to take that hill, you know, and he was going to crush it down. It's going to be easy cruising. And my life is going to be amazing again. It wasn't. <laughs> His ways aren't our ways. Just a few years later, my ex-wife divorced me. And I'm sending on this promise, Lord, you said you're going to lead me. You said you're going to guide me. You said you weren't going to leave these things undone. Lord, what's going on? And things didn't seem to get better. They seemed to get worse. Then in 2009, I married my beautiful Eva. Oh, my baby. Can you do that? My grizzly bear. <laughs> Keeping score. Rawr. Look, look, so, you know, look, when I married Pastor Eva, I was done with the ministry. She tells people she didn't even know I was a pastor. I was done with this. I was done. Um, I thought that was my life. This kind of life was over. But I had a great job. I worked as a chaplain with the LA Mission. I had a part of the management team. I had an amazing job, making great money. In 2010, just right after marrying Pastor, I got laid off from that amazing job. And it was like back, I said, wait a minute. But God's word was the same. I just didn't, it didn't look like what I thought it was going to look like. But God was working. So in 2013, it, I was unemployed for three years after being in the full-time ministry, 27 years, not missing a paycheck, making, earning good money, being used by God. Even after I couldn't come back and pastor, God opened a great job for me at the LA Mission downtown Skid Row where he was using me in a different capacity. 
Now I'm three years without a job. I'm broke. My house is falling apart. I had just gotten married. I thought, man, what a mistake. Look what I brought this woman into. It's terrible. And but in 2013, three years after marrying pastor, three years after my four years after marrying pastor, three years being unemployed, I went back to school. And I learned some beautiful things in school. I learned how to serve. I learned how to die. I wasn't Pastor Henry anymore. I was just a student. I wasn't just a student. I was a struggling student. <laughs> I didn't have brand new cars in my driveway anymore. I had a Toyota Corolla with almost 400,000 miles on it that I couldn't ride on the freeway because it, I'd be driving at 55, George, and all of a sudden it would just slow down. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to pull aside, man, let everybody go by. And I'm going to say, man, I struggled in school. I worked in a warehouse. I remember the first paycheck I got as a student worker. It was like even $100, but it was the first check I had gotten in three years. I cried. I brought it home to Eva, you know. I, you know, I told this joke yesterday. What does it mean to be more than a conqueror? I came home a conqueror with my check. I had to give it to more than a conqueror. <laughs> I was so happy. It wasn't a lot. But it was something. I stayed in school for six years. That was where I came back to life. And I got to learn, and I, I got to find out about myself, and I, I found my identity, we found my identity in him. You know? And it was, it was beautiful. I graduated in 2019, and I moved out here. It was just crazy the way God opened this church for me. It was nothing less than a miracle. And I've seen God's word come to pass. This word. He hasn't left it undone. I'm so happy. You know, this last couple of years, man, I've gotten into two. I've gotten total two cars. I almost got, I, well, I got sucked up by a semi-truck on the, on the grapevine. It should have killed me. Pastor Evan and I, we were going out with David and Darla in our brand new car. And out of nowhere, they were following us. A car came and just ran right into us. And it took me to the hospital. I had a thing on my neck. I've been so sick during this time of season here. And yet God's word is coming to pass. It don't always look like what you think it's going to look like, but I am so feel like I am so much in the center of God's will for my life. Amen. God will direct you. And it don't look pretty sometimes. Some people have had it easier. But it's all been good for me. Because all things, the Bible says in Romans chapter 828 says, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God made a way that I could not see. You know, and eight years later, here I am, okay, back at the at where I'm supposed to be in the center of God's will. And look, man. He spoke it in here, it's on the line, and my Bible is, is more wore out than it was back then. You know, because I'm still, listen, you'd never get so, I'm more than 40 years in this. Over 35 years in the full-time ministry. And it never gets old, it never gets tired. It, 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 it takes work. But God will see you through He'll take the reshape, the darkness. He'll clear out the road. Why? Because he loves you. He loves you. This may not be easy. He don't take you around the Red Sea like I said. Sometimes he has to just walk you through it. 
So, Joseph, I'm going to ask you to come. Come on, but get on the piano with me. I want, we're going to do this today. First, I want every head bowed and every eye closed. Remember I said that God can't steer a parked car. The Bible says come near to God and God will come near to you. So you listen, want to take that first step towards Jesus today. I want your, uh, the heads are bowed, the eyes are closed. You want Jesus. You want as Jesus into your life. You don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ but you want today. You want to start moving on the path that he set before you. I just want you to look up, make eye contact with me, and put your head back down. I'm looking around real quick. Right? Beautiful. Right, I want everybody to look up. We're going to have one person we're going to pray with who's going to ask Jesus into their heart today. But there's some of y'all just struggling, man. You need a word from God. You need direction. You need somebody to connect with God with you today. You just need prayer in that area. I want you to stand and come right now. Come on. You need direction right now. You're at that place. You're at a hard place. You need some direction in your life. Come. We want to pray with you this morning. Nobody? Nobody needs that? Okay. Come on. Come on. If the, she, don't, she won't come by herself, so she needs her friend to bring her. Come. Come. Uh, come on. Yes. Pastor, I want you to pray with her this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor, I'm going to pray with you. I need somebody up here to pray with Diana, pastors. Anybody else? You're at a place you need direction. Anybody else? You need prayer. You need direction. Come on. I'm going to wait a little bit. Maybe you don't need direction. Maybe you just need prayer today. You want somebody to stand with you. I want you to come. Our elders are here. The pastors are here. We'd love to pray with you this morning. Lord, we love you. And God, I thank you that you are a God of direction. God, that you take dark things and you turn them to light. That you take rugged paths and make them flat. You are amazing and there's no one like you. Lord, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for the precious promises that you've made to them and those that are coming to pass. I pray, God, that as they leave this place, Lord, they would walk in your perfect will, empowered by the Spirit, filled with your word, connected with your people, for the glory of God. As we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to turn this place into a house so you can have a little fellowship. Don't leave without greeting each other and loving each other. Be sensitive to Holy Spirit. He might have you want to pray for somebody today. We're going to be praying with these that are up here. Joseph, you go ahead and lead in that song. Oh.